Hey guys, today we're going to look at some of the more advanced features of Smart Notebook 11 for your lesson creation and activity building with your students. The first thing we are going to look at is hyperlinks. And hyperlinks are links that can be clicked on to take you to a website, to another page in your file, or to another document. Hyperlinks can be used in a variety of ways in lessons and it can increase student engagement in the interactivity of your lesson. Simply to make a hyperlink to a website, all you need to do is this. You need to go into a web browser. I'm going to use Starfall they have up, which is a popular site that our students like to use. Simply copy, paste that into your, into your notebook. When that's in there, you can highlight it as an object. Go to link and paste your address again. And you'll notice the globe right here, and that, when I click on it, will take me right to starfall.com. So that's a way to enter a direct web uh, link onto the text of the website into um, your page. You could also type anything. You could type, uh, let's go to Starfall and play. Go up to here and select that up here, link, and then put that link in again there, okay, and then it's the same thing. Both of these are going to take you to Starfall. It does not have to say the actual address to take you to Starfall. It's basically what you type in that link box. You could have anything there. You could have, say, let's go to ESPN.com and have that go to Starfall. You know, it's nothing to do with the text on your screen here. It's what you type in that box when you link it to something. The same can be said for an object. You can have another object on your page. Um, let's put, um, let's see if we can find some building blocks. Okay, how's that right there? Let's put some building blocks there. Again, it's an object, so it gives me all of these options. I'm going to hit link. I'm going to paste my site again in there. I'm going to insert the link. So you'll notice I have a link here, a link here, and a link here. Each one of these is going to take me to Starfall, whether it says Starfall here whether it's just text randomly here, whether it's any random object here, it's because when I opened that, I typed Starfall in the link box and then attached it to my object here. So that's pretty nice, the ability to link. And then, of course, when you click that link, it will take you right to your page that you're linking to. You see a corner icon here. You can change that by going into here, selecting Object. What that's going to do is your object is going to link to the website rather than giving you that corner icon there. So if you have students with more of a fine motor need or you just want to touch the object and have it link right to the page, that's an easier way to do it as well. Okay. Hyperlinking to another page in the file is really a neat thing to do. Um, it's similar to making a link to a web page. You can attach a link to text or an object. Before you create the link, make sure you have already created the page in your notebook file that you plan to link to. It's underutilized. A lot of people don't know this is even an option, but it's really neat if you want to do some self-checking quizzes or things like that. Let's just take a quick look at it. I'm going to make two simple pages. Um, the first page, I'll put a carrot. You have a carrot on there, carrots right there. All right, I'm going to go to a new page, and on that new page, I'm going to type the word carrot. All right, let's go back to my first page. I'm going to type a question under there. Let's go to a text box here. Uh, what are these? Uh, I'm going to select my text, and then I can link that like I do a web to a web page. But I'm going to link it not to a web page. I'm going to link it to a page in this file. Okay. Then it's going to ask me, what page? Well, this is simply I'm going to link it to the second page I made right here. It says the answer, carrot. Okay. I'm going to insert that link. You'll notice it looks different than a globe because it's not taking me to the web. So when you do this lesson, it says, what are these? The student clicks it. It takes you to your page that says carrot. Again, you're on this page. The question says, what are these? Click it. It'll take you to the page that says carrot. Again, that's linking to another page in my file. I mean, you could do math problems with that. You could have um, link, link a picture that says click your answer. You could have anything there and click it and link it to another page. If you have many, many pages, you might want to think about um, 
you know, specifying the better names of your pages so you know exactly what you're linking to. Uh, you could have feedback on there. Um, great job. Incorrect. Try again. Again, so that's hyperlinking to another page that's in your notebook file. Another great feature in Notebook is called animation, and adding animations to a lesson is another way to make exciting activities to enhance the content you're teaching. If you're familiar to adding animations to PowerPoints and things like that, you'll have no problem creating animations in a smart notebook. You can animate any object or text to fly onto a page, to spin, to fade in, to shrink, and more. You can also set the animation to start when you open a page or when you click on an object. Um, and this is something that you really should get into play around with. There's so many options and choices. And when you mix and match the features, you can really enhance and make your lessons more interactive. I'm just going to show you, you know, a simple, simple way to do this. Um, I'm going to make some text. I'm going to say, which is the triangle? Question mark. Okay. Let's see. I'll put two shapes on my page. I'll put a triangle. Um, let's take that one, drop it there, and then I'm going to take a circle. It's getting very, very simple, but just to show you the um, choices you have when you are using the animation feature. Okay, there's my triangle, there's my circle. Right now there are objects, no animation on them. So in order to animate, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the object I want to animate. I'm going to click on the Properties tab over here, and then you'll see I have a whole host of things that I can do. One of those tabs says Object Animation. I want it to spin. Let's check Spin. Clockwise, I'm going to tip Slow. And when the object is clicked, I want, okay? I don't want it to repeat again. You have all these choices for repeat. So basically what I want to do is when the student touches the triangle, I want it to spin because I want it to inst um, in, um, note that that's the correct answer. But I want nothing to happen when I touch the circle, okay? So if the student comes up which one's the triangle, clicks on triangle, it animates, that's correct, shows that that is the correct answer. If you clicked on circle, nothing would happen. So again, that's a pretty, pretty simple um, explanation of animation. Again, if I click my circle and I go to properties and I go to animation, I mean, you could do anything with it. You could have it fade out when it's clicked. You could have it fade in when it's clicked, flip around an axis, fly in, fly out, shrink and grow, spin. Again, my speeds over here, if I was to select something like spin in the direction I want it to go. Um, again, when the object is clicked, when the page is entered, um, how many times I want it to repeat. Okay. One of the nice applications of animation is that you can choose all the directions, speeds, repeats, etc. I'm just going to show you in about three minutes a very quick activity that you may find yourself using animation for, for kind of like a hidden reveal type activity. Um, I'm going to type, again, I'm doing this very quickly. I'm not making it pretty. I'm just going to show you how it works. Um, I'm going to type up here, find George Washington. All right, and then I'm going to use some ant shapes and animation to make a small interactive activity. I'm going to choose a couple ovals. There's one. Actually, you know what? We'll clone that. That way it's the same size. Um, let's fill those to make them look nice. Let's fill this one. We'll go to properties. Do a little gradient fill. I like that. We'll do the same thing on here. Properties. We'll do a gradient fill on that as well. Okay, so you can see we have two objects right here on our page. Let's go grab some pictures. Um, let's take Abraham Lincoln. Uh, we're going to have to make that make it a lot smaller. Let's really make that smaller. It's going to have to fit behind the shapes I just made. So there's George, uh, Abraham Lincoln. And let's find Washington. There's George. Do the same thing. We're going to have to make it small enough to fit behind those ovals I just made. Okay, now we're going to do a couple of our features that we've used before. This is in front. I want those in back of my ovals. So, remember, click on your object. Go to order. Send back. So there he is behind. I'm going to cover him up. And, again, this one we're going to have to do the same thing to. I'm going to order, and I'm going to send that to the back as well. Okay, so you can see kind of right now 
what we have. You could simply have this as an activity, have the students come up and move and find um, George Washington in this way. But I'm going to show you how to use animation to do that. Okay, I'm going to click on my oval, and what I want it to do is this. I'm going to hit Properties, and when the student clicks it, I want it to fade out because I want it to reveal what's behind it. Object Animation, Fade Out. I'm going to do it slowly. I like slow better, kind of more effect. When the object is clicked, and I just want it to do it one time. I don't want it to keep repeating. I just want it to do it one time. Okay. I'm going to set the same animation properties on this one. We're going to fade out. Let's make it slow. When the object is clicked, and I want it just to happen one time. Okay. That's a repeat once. I'm sorry. I'm repeating it one time. If you didn't want it to repeat at all, you would click none on that one. I'm sorry, I misspoke when I did that the first time. So here's your activity. Again, I just made this an animated interactive activity. Student comes up, let's find George Washington. They touch the circle, it fades out, and reveals, again, it's going to do it again because I hit repeat one time. There it is, there's George Washington. Similarly, if you come on over here, you touch that, you would see Abraham Lincoln. That's not the correct answer, obviously, but it just shows you how you can click. I animated those ovals so it fades out and it reveals what's behind it. So it makes your activities more interactive and engaging. Okay, so that is animating objects to create different lessons. Well, along with the animations, uh, there's so many, so many ways you can make interactive activities with your students. I'm going to just show you a couple more instances of interactive objects you might want to explore when you're making lessons. They can be found um, right in through here if you use your search bar or in your lesson activity toolkits, um, things like that. You can find all these interactive objects. I'm going to show you a couple. Again, there's tens and tens and tens of these that you can find, explore, play with, and see what you might um used to enhance your lessons. Now the first one I'm going to just show you is a simple interactive dice. Again, you can do image it, you can do um, image dice, you can do picture dice, I'm sorry, word dice. I'm going to use this and I'm going to use, let's see, keyword dice. I'm going to drag that in here and I want to edit that by clicking the arrows right here. So let's see, um, if you're doing a getting to know your activity, let's say, and you want to spin the dice, and whatever it lands on, you say that about yourself. So we could do favorites. Let's do food, animal, team, um, game, person, and place. You know, I just did that quick, but you get the idea. So if you have the students come up to the board, you say spin the dice, whatever it lands on. I want you to tell me your favorite animal. Next, favorite, animal. Next, favorite, person. Again, you get the idea, just a quick, quick, quick interactive activity. Um, another one I'll show you is called the question flipper. And again, these can all be found in your lesson activity toolkit builders under interactive um, objects. Um, this is, I'm going to use, let's see, you can use images. Let's use text because it's a lot easier to... Um, show when I'm making text. So on the front I might say um, what's my name? Again, this is just doing this quickly. And in the back I'm going to put Mark. Okay, you hit it. What's my name? Click it. In the back it reveals an answer. So you could have names and images on the back. Um, you could have questions and answers on the, you know, from comprehension, things like that. Who, what, where. Um, again, that's called the question flipper. That's again located in here. And there's some lesson activity examples. Um, doing this quickly, there's a lot on here. I mean, I, I, there's stuff added also a lot. Um, I'm going to do image match to show you that quickly. Uh, let's make a new page quickly. Uh, image match. Again, if you want to create an interactive activity without having to create everything yourself, the boxes and things like that, you can go to Image Match, 
Um, let's take blue. Doesn't matter what color you pick. It just give you colors. Um, down here at the bottom of it, I'm sorry, the top, you can click edit. It says number of images. For this, let's just do three to keep it simple. Um, let's do carrot. Let's do celery. Let's do potato. I'm going to go into my images and I'm going to find the pictures to put. One. Oh, there's no celery. Well, let's change that. Let's change that to. Um, tomato. Okay, thankfully there's tomatoes there. We'll drag tomatoes there. Hopefully we have potatoes. There we go. Now watch what happens. I just made my activity on edit mode. When I click OK, it's going to show me my interactive activity. What do you do? You match the pictures and the words. Okay, so it's a very, very easy way to make an interactivity, inter interactive activity um, without having to create the boxes, without having to create, write the words. It took me two minutes to make a nice interactive activity that's very, very customizable. So the dice, image, and text, question flipper, image match, um, are just a couple examples. Again, you go into lesson activity examples, interactive techniques. You'll find a lot of different activities in here. Activity builder. You find a lot, a lot of different activity types in here. Um, if you go to the lesson activity toolkit, you can find in graphics, interactive graphics. You can find under examples some different page files and different ways to do things that are already pre-made interactive activities, multiple choice, yes, no, matching. Um, again, just go in there and search. You'll find a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of different things um, that you can use for your lessons based on what you might need for them. Okay, so that's simple interactive objects that just came after animations, just some other ways to create lessons to save you a lot of time and to have interactive activities for your students. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.